Welcome to my first ever recorded video on how to play chess. So if you want to get into the game, we just start right away and I'll show you how to move the pieces and how to play some decent chess. As I give you all the information that I got, I'm ranked around 1500 in Blitz. And I want to just give you a short introduction. So we start with the pawns. We have eight pawns in the whole uh, second, how do you, fi not file, you say file. Um, the pawns can move two times at the beginning or just one time. So you're allowed to move the pawn one time or you're allowed to move it twice. That is just possible for the first time the pawn ever moves. After these two steps, for example here and let's say here and here, these two guys can always advance for one more step at a time. The pawns only are allowed to hit diagonally in front. So if your pawn moves, for example, two steps, he moves two steps, you are allowed to hit this guy and take this pawn off the board. Whether he, if he moves here, you're not allowed to take. So pawns just go direct, go straight, but they hit diagonally, but one, just one square diagonally. So that's about the pawns. Then we have the knights. Why I'm starting with the knights? Because the knights are most likely after you push the pawns to the center, central squares. These, these squares are very, very important in chess. Then the next thing is you bring out the knights. How does the knight move? The knight moves in an L, as you can see here on the bar. Always can go two moves in these directions and then one left or right. So you can move here. Let's say here and he moves the pawn. But now you can see where the pawn, mo the, the knight can move. Knight two up here, this is a potential square. But also this is a potential square. But this is also a potential square. And if you want to go here, it could be a square, but it's now blocked, so you're not allowed to go there. Also, here is a potential square. Here is a potential square. Here is a potential square. And here is a potential square. So if the knight is at the, in the middle of the board, it has eight potential squares. Only, of course, if they're all free at the moment, there's some are blocked. If the knight is at the rim, no good. Knight at the rim is a trim. So we just have four possible squares that we that we can go to, right? So the other squares are outside of the board. That ain't good. So always keep your knights in the center of the board. Then we have the bishops. The bishops can go diagonally as far as they can look. For now, the bishop cannot move because the pawn's blocking the lines. So you have to go first up here. Let's say here, this is a typical opening in chess. E4, E5, well, probably the most played uh, moves in chess. Then, now, the bishop can travel all the way down as many squares as you want. But, of course, just one direction. You cannot go here and then go, go ahead. So, that's just one move. Um, the dark square bishop, the same. So, let's say, for example, you go out here. He comes out here. Now, the dark square bishop, you free the dark square bishop and he can go everywhere where he can go. Is that, a, is that a clever square here? No, because then, of course, it gets taken. You learn quite good. That's amazing. So, that is these four guys. Then we have the queen, the most powerful piece in the board. On the board, uh, we can also go to the, to the to rooks, but we, we take the queen. So, once the queen goes out, the queen can move in all directions as, as long as they can look kind of and also diagonally and that's why the queen is so powerful so these are all potential squares from the queen again if the queen is outside of the board she's very very powerful although in the beginning of the game you should not put the queen out because then the knights and the bishops really getting uh, a lot of trouble for the queen okay so queen is the most powerful piece in the board but not bring the queen out too early and the rooks are the ones that are similar to the bishops, as the bishops go diagonally, the rooks can go exactly like uh, straight uh, on the lines. But also, of course, now it's blocked. But if, let's say, we just make some random moves, now bring the rook out, let's say here. Now the rook can travel all up there as far as he can look. So he can go with one move up here. Also very for powerful um, piece, especially in the end games, because you can control the whole the whole um, game with just like two moves. 
What else is very important is about the point system in chess. So there is point system in chess that means you have for every piece a certain amount of points that it's worth. So the pawn is one point. Then we have the knights and the bishops. They are each three points. The rook. Look at this. <laughs> the, look, the rook is five points. And the queen, as said already, whoops. The queen is nine points. Nine, neuf, nueve. Nueve, nueve, nine points. So that is important to know. So one point, these guys are three points, five points in the corner and nine points. The queen, of course, the king. I forgot the king, guys. Of course, after there is any move. The kings can at any time move just one square. And now they can move to all the squares around the king, but just one move. Okay. So this is the king's possible options now you can see here if i click at the king these two squares are not an option why because this is a move it's controlled by the pawn that means the king cannot walk into the check the same as this and this square is controlled from the queen so the king can go in squares that are controlled from other pieces because if i would go here the queen could take me right away and that's just not allowed Okay, so the king can just move one square at a time and all around if the king is standing in the center of the board would be these kind of possible moves. But the king, of course, if the king um, gets checked, there's three options. Either the piece um, can be taken, that the king get checked, the king uh, get, um, can get away, so he walks away, or you put any other piece in between the king, for example, let's make it that way. So now we see here, uh, any other move, random move, queen goes check. So your king is in danger now, very much in danger in this position, because now you cannot hit the queen because there's no, no piece that can hit the queen. You cannot move the king because the only, the only square that the king can move is already controlled from the queen. And you cannot put anything in there. Like you cannot put the, the, you can, the knight can go here, bishop is blocked, rook is blocked, that's called very much it. Um, what I wanted to say is um, exactly. So these are the three options. If there is no option possible, then you just you just got checkmated. Um, actually, yeah, there was an option. You see, I'm a very bad chess player because after this random move, there is the move pawn goes up. I mean, I never played this opening because it's a bad opening, so that's why I was like, okay, I remember, for example, if you go, um, if I take the first the first step here, then he goes up here, and then you go here, that's the fastest way of uh, checkmating in chess, because now the queen gets out here, and as we cannot push the pawn anymore, now it's that check that is no chance for white to save the whole game, this is checkmate for black, and black wins the game. Okay, because we can't move, we can't move the king, we can't put any piece in between here, and we can't capture the queen. Okay, going back to the point system. So once we are, for example, in a position like this, which is very common, we can take here the pawn. Because remember, the knight can go in an L version movement. If we take the pawn, is it clever? Because the knight can take our knight, and now we have to do the math. A pawn, a pawn worth one point and the knight worth, like our knight that we had here, is worth three points. So the opponent has three points and we just have one point. So that exchange is a very bad exchange. So that's just how you exchange or have to think makes sense or makes no sense. That's actually all about it. Um, the last thing that I want to that I want to tell you is um, after you put the pawn, so the basic rules is bringing the pawns to the center. The next thing is bringing your knights out. And after that, bringing your bishops out, for example, something like this and like this. If you have done this, the next thing what you do is castling. I forgot about the rule of castles that we cover right now here shortly. So castle is a way of bringing your king into safety, which is very important. So after you develop your pieces and all your minor pieces, you call them minor pieces, are developed, you can castle your king. That's what I did here. That means you can jump with the king just for that single thing. You can jump two times 
in one direction of the rook there is not allowed to be any other piece between the rook and the king so if the lines are free here the king can just jump two squares but just one time in the whole game king can jump two squares and the rook jumps over the king this is unique very unique and it just happens can happen once a time a uh, once a game um it's not a must but it's highly recommended especially at beginner level because if the king is in the center um, the king is very vulnerable and uh, if you castle the king for example at this side um, you can also do it to the other side the king is more safe in the corner with the three pawns in the front rook covering here so that's very a very safe king so that's the last thing that i, that I wanted to cover um, there is a little bit of more really i mean there's one last one last uh, rule that i want to show you um if your if your pawn is on if it crossed the center of the board so if your pawn crossed the center of the board and now the opponent goes two steps up with the pawn means kind of he's faking the confrontation because normally the pawn can pass a pawn with my pawn not having a chance of hitting him if that happens but your pawn is exactly here crossing the board and is on the fifth rank then you can just so-called en passant you can just hit the pawn by going diagonally into a potential strike like he goes here it's the same if he goes here you can also go here and the pawn is just taken and it's a similar and exactly the same um, position as he would just go one step that just prevents the opponents from just rushing their pawns away not getting not not having not letting this pawn a chance of hitting your pawn so this is only the like only a, 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 a rule that are only a few people know even kind of in my level when I am, I'm playing and I'm an intermediate uh, level player so yeah that was it thank you very much hope you enjoyed and if you have any further question uh, write it in the, write it in the uh, in the comments and uh, I'll try to cover the next one. Thank you guys take care and all the best. Ch -ch 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 ciao.